Well, it's Next Wave Cruising. Welcome to Hawaii. We made it. We went, sailed all the way from Australia, Sydney Harbor, and now we're up into Maui. Maui, not quite our last stop. We're yep. going to be here for the day and then head over to Oahu and get off in right. Honolulu tomorrow. But it might be a nice time to do a little bit of a recap right. of some of what's been happening on this 18 night right. bucket list Trans Pacific Cruise itinerary. And we're here on Celebrity Eclipse right. enjoying every minute. It's really been, you know, 18 nights, that's the longest cruise that I've ever been on. And by a few days at least. By a couple of days. And uh, certainly this is the most sea days I've had in any one chunk. We've had what, what last was five. Right. And, and we had uh, four in a row before that and right. two in a row before that. Right. So, um, but I'll tell you, uh, our, our cruise director and the crew here, uh, they've done a great job of keeping people uh, occupied and things to do. and. Uh, fun stuff to, to take part in. And people have been participating. There's activities going all the time and there are always people engaged, whether yeah. it's morning, noon, or late, late right. into the evening, well past the time that I crash. So oh, absolutely. I've missed a few of those, but they've yeah. been great. They've even brought on guest entertainers and they we're going to do that again tonight. Right. So it's not just the wonderful you know guests and entertainers that are on board to start with. Right. It keeps rotating and changing on a, a long itinerary like this and that's made it you know, kind of a, a new thing. Every week you've got something right. new to look forward to. Right, a lot more interesting than the same thing every single night. And uh, speaking of uh, the same thing, we've been able to enjoy all of the dining venues that are here. We've, we've been to, uh, except for the, uh, the, the Blue and Lumine, uh, we've dined uh, main dining room. And I'll tell you, I thought our, our servers were excellent. I thought the food was very good. There was, there was one night when I felt eh, I could have done a little bit better, but on the whole, I mean, they're cooking for hundreds and hundreds of people. people right? On the whole, the variety was good. They change it up all the time. That was great. We went to Murano. Uh, we went to uh, Tuscan. Tuscan uh, so and, multiple and times. Multiple and so, times. I mean, that's something to think about if someone is on a long itinerary. Mm -hmm. Think about those package dining options that right. are offered. And sometimes there are everything from two, three, or four nights to right. seven, eight, nine, ten nights sure. of specialty dining. This ship has a limited number of specialty dining venues, right. so that may kind of offset how many times someone goes. But if you want right. to rotate out of the main dining room right. or the buffet, mm -hmm. then give it a try. Yeah. For the 17 nights that we've been here, we've done the buffet for dinner a couple of times. We have. Uh, and that's a nice way to lighten things up. It, it is, because it's hard to sit there and have the time commitment for a sit-down dinner. Uh, every single night, so it was nice to be able to hit the hit the buffet and, and just make move it a on. little easier and move on. Exactly. Right, especially if you have things to do in the evening. Right. And now, talk to me about the ship, the Celebrity Eclipse. We yeah. spent 17 out of our 18 nights so far. Right. Um, how's the shape of this ship and the crew, and how does it hit you about uh, sailing on Celebrity Eclipse? You know, it's it's uh, one thing that really kind of uh, stuck out to me is between our wait staff in all of the restaurants and our cabin attendant they just seem to be so experienced right and so they do their job so well at least the people that that we've encountered and we've we've worked with everybody's been great everybody's uh you know the the bartenders are they they remember you they know what you want right uh they always greet you with a smile that was the other thing whenever you're walking up and down the hall no matter who you are or or who who greets you there's always uh, a, a celebrity crew member that's always going to say good morning good afternoon have uh, a great you know, day look you in the face so they've been they've been absolutely great they have you know i know they mentioned in one of the announcements here too that they do monthly recognitions and mm -hmm. milestone recognitions include tenure, right. to your point, and they have quite a number of crew members who hit their 20, 25, and even 30 year anniversaries with this cruise line, with this cruise line. much less their whole right. career. And so we do have a very experienced crew here, yeah. and uh, it shows. It, it does, I mean, they, they really do a great job. I saw a bartender with a full bar, one guy, he was handling everybody, and he was doing a really good job. I mean, I've been on other cruise lines where they may have three or four guys back there, and you're still waiting and waiting and waiting. But and it may or may not come out, right? With ex the exactly. <laughs> no, so he did a great job. They, they, they do a really good job, or they, they try to, and they try to get to everyone in order 
and you know they work very hard at, at pleasing the guests from what I've seen on this end of it. Well that makes sense. Yeah. Now how about from a stateroom point of view? We tried to think about you know spending 18 nights in one stateroom right. and what category of stateroom might be you know useful and helpful to us. So, right. um, how did that go for you? Well that worked great because we were you know lucky enough to be able to snag one of the out aft uh, cabins with the veranda. The sunset veranda. <laughs> and they call that's it, been right? great. So we've been able to sit out there, uh, have a glass of wine. And, uh, and you have these limitless views off the back of the ship. We are right. in a similar position up a few decks as we're doing this little chat, <clears throat> but in about the same position, right. looking off the aft of the ship as we have this little chat. Right. And to have these limitless views right from our own stateroom, whether we're in the stateroom or outside on the lanai. Right has been really, really a treat. Yeah, it has. Very, very nice. Now, it's a little bit of a walk. Every time you want something, you have to walk all the way to the back of the, to the ship to get back to your cabin, but I thought it was worth it. I don't you know. bother, it doesn't bother me to walk. I no. think we want to get our steps in and keep active right. and moving. So you get back up to that midship elevator and it's really not that And then far. once you get to there, you're pretty much in the middle of everything. You just push a button and you're You're where you there. need to be, absolutely. Yeah. So that's you know good wrap up in terms of the ship being in good shape. It's not the newest ship, but it is well maintained. And as you talked about the crew, they have a very experienced crew. We've had some interesting meals. We'll probably chat a little bit in another talk even about meals and right. restaurants here. Right. Um, but how about destination, port destinations? Because we started this iconic itinerary in one of the best sail away cities ever, Sydney, Australia, and spent a few days there before right. we ever got going. We did. Yep. You can you know check out our sail away video and and uh, see a little bit more about Sydney, but uh, we did that and then we went to New Zealand, we went to French Polynesia. We had multiple stops. So um, when we left, we had two days of sailing across the Tasman Sea. We went to Bay of Islands, yeah. which is on the North Island of New Zealand, and it's very outdoorsy. So people were doing a lot of outdoor kinds of activities. We chose bike riding, so we were right. bike riding through the countryside and. You don't see a lot of, um, you know, big city life, but you just get a sense of the landscape. You get a sense of um, the raising cattle, or you know, the the, the agricultural, and and then the, the fruits and the trees, and right. you know what's growing and what's being harvested there. Yeah, New Zealand is a, a fantastic countryside. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the greens are so deep green. Really, the water is beautiful. So that's a great stop, and not one that you make on every itinerary. If you go around New Zealand, so it was kind of right. fun mm -hmm. to go to Bay of Islands as a new stop for right. us. The second stop was Auckland, which we've done before, right. but we spent our time differently. We, we did a little. How different. about Waiheke Island? That was beautiful. I'll one tell of our you. favorite stops. You know, New Zealand is, is a very beautiful country. You really need to put that on your list. Absolutely, it's a bucket list for sure. Now, Waiheke Island is a short ferry ride from Auckland, which is really a city based on the harbor. Well, we are back inside. Yes. <laughs> you know, one of the things about doing our vlogs on our cruise ships, and especially outside, is the weather. Yes. Now, sometimes the weather gets us because it's raining, but sometimes the weather gets us because it's warm. Well, it was warm for us, but it was even more warm for the camera because the camera was overheating. So we, we had have to, regrouped. We had to bring the poor little thing in and, you know. We're going to take it again, <laughs> pick up where we left off. Right. And I think that was really that we had stopped at um, a couple of really cool places in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And the second one was probably my favorite of the two. Right. The stop was Auckland. But we'd been in Auckland before, and so we thought, what could we do that was new and different and well-regarded? Right. And one of the highly rated things to do is to go to Waiiki Island by ferry. Yep. And that wasn't very far. No, it only took maybe about uh, 30 minutes to get out there by the ferry, and right. it was great. That was a lot of fun. It was well worth it. And <laughs> it's, again, beautiful landscapes, beautiful water surrounding this island. <laughs> well, Waiiki Island is really known for its climate that's very supportive of growing grapes for wine and so the <clears throat> vineyards there form one of the important wine regions of New Zealand like the Marlborough region that's on the north end of the South Island this being further north has different kinds of right. blends and grapes mm -hmm. and it was really great to visit some of the vineyards there right. and we had a wonderful day excursion doing that oh, we tried some really nice Absol wines absolutely I think you enjoyed a few oh I did and I think you know one of them that we went to the guy was really great and I think that makes a lot of it too. You get the personality, you get a little bit about the backstory. Mm -hmm. It's worth the ferry ride. 
If you've been to Auckland before and want to try something different, I would highly recommend Waikiki Island. Absolutely. Now, other people went and did zip lining too. So there's other kinds of outdoorsy activities and things to do. It's not just about the grapes, but right. <laughs> that wasn't a bad way to spend the day. We really enjoyed that. Yeah. And then once we left New Zealand, we were back at sea for about four days straight. It was four days. And then the ship carried us north to French Polynesia. Yes. And French Polynesia is someplace we had never been before. So Tahiti, right. uh, which is, we went to Papiete, which yeah. is the capital there. The next day we were in Morea mm -hmm. and then Raiatea. <laughs> so we went to three islands, three different stops. And all of a sudden it got warm out. Yeah. The water was <clears throat> warm. The water was clear mm -hmm. right down to your feet. Yep. And no matter what we did, we had some kind of boating adventure on each of the three days. Right. And that was a lot of fun as well. Yeah. Um, now, I think, you know, the first day we did a catamaran. Mm -hmm. And so we got to get an idea of what was going on with that island. Some of the people on our excursion did some snorkeling and right. some swimming. And others of us sat back and just enjoyed the sail. Right. And the second day was one of our favorites. Morea. Oh, now yes. you hopped off the boat that day. That was great because you got to swim with the with the uh, uh, sharks and the uh, stingrays. stingrays, and that, that was a lot of fun. It's right. not quite the same as Stingray City off of Grand Cayman, but it was still the same type of thing, uh, just more sharks and less stingrays. All right, they're a little more of a mix. Those are <laughs> black tip sharks. Right. They didn't <clears throat> seem bothered at all by the tourists no. hopping off of the boats and no. and moving around. But that water couldn't have been more clear oh, it's, it's, and yeah, prettier. Absolutely. And then when we were done with that and had a little bit more of a boating excursion, <clears throat> Uh, one of the famous things to do in French Polynesia is go to a motu, a small island, mm -hmm. and there are a number of small islands where you will see them put on basically some kind of a picnic or right. a meal. Mm -hmm. And the one that we went to was very extensive. There was some very authentic uh, recipes used, like there was ceviche. How yes. did you like that? I really did. I like that a lot. I mean, I've, I've tried it every place I go. I always try to, to get, you know, whatever their local blend is. Right. And this was very good. It was excellent. And yeah. for people who want everything cooked, like right. I'll raise my hand, yeah. there were so, so many other well, choices. Oh, we yeah. had pork, we had chicken, we had salads, we had bread yeah. and pineapple. And yep. So it was a really, really nice day to be in nature. And mm -hmm. even in the <clears> stop <throat> with the, uh, the picnic lunch, we could go back snorkeling, we could go back in the water and the service level it couldn't have been oh those guys better. were great they, they? Oh, hard they were just working hard they were be. so friendly they would do you know it was you know they really, want it, you to have it a good time. really made you you know join in and have a great time yeah. That was a fun day and you think well yeah. we've you know first day was great second day was you know great plus right and then we had a third stop and well what's going to be right and we did another boat trip right but it was more up a river mm -hmm. and so the landscape was different it had more of a jungle feel like the right. big overgrown tropical plants and right. things and <clears throat> um, we saw some different kinds of, of little animals along the shore and then when we came out we went yet to another island right. to go swimming right yep I bet that was one of your favorites. It, it really was. Again, you know, I I was able to just walk right in. The water was just so beautiful. I don't it see was, you do that very many <clears> places <throat> no, in don't. the world. <laughs> Not even my own pool. You know, I have to edge my way in. So it but was great. It was, <clears> again, water was clear. Some of the scenery there was so outstanding off different sides of that island. Right. We had such a great excursion. And it really makes you feel like three days in French Polynesia is not quite Oh, experiencing definitely it all. we are already talking about coming back not on a cruise but just to stay for a few days you know or for to a cruise week. all the way around you or know, to you cruise could around do, them you could yep. do that rather than cruise we'll do both. to it and pass right right so there's a lot of options right. of how we can help people see french polynesia and right. we definitely want to do that for ourselves absolutely a bucket list itinerary i know we said that before oh, it really is but <clears> it's <throat> if you have the time and can give it the 18 nights that it needs not everybody gets to do this right. trip but it is so, so worth it. And it really requires more than just 18, because you have to spend some time in Sydney 
uh, it's a wonderful city. Absolutely. You just can't go there, land, and hop on a ship. There's too much well, to do. That would be there. such a disappointing uh, way really. to do it. You get there. It takes so so long from the U.S. or many parts of the world to get there, uh, and then to leave the next day. Spend a few days there, and then. And even that will never be enough. And that, it's no. a city to visit over and over. And it over. is. There's always something. to New do. Zealand. You're yep. never done. Nice. It's just one of the prettiest places on, in the world that you could go. Yep. And the sailing was really great as well, and we talked about that earlier. So much to do on this ship, activities every day, activities that <clears throat> rotated and changed, and right. people were definitely not in their cabins or just sort of oh, no. hanging out in corners. People yeah. were coming together. We had a guest talent show. We did. They so, brought they brought talent in from uh, from the islands to do a to do a, a talent show, and it was like a it was like a mini luau you know, on stage, and they were fantastic. Well, that was the guest performers. They right. were fantastic. Right. And we had a guest talent show. Oh, that's right. The guest talent show. That's on right. On top of yes. the guest performers who right. came in, and we'll have more of them tonight. But we have people on this <clears throat> ship who practice for really two, two and a half weeks, singing, hula dancing, playing the ukulele, <laughs> and they put on quite a performance. They did. It was fantastic. Yep. So people have gotten to experiment, try things. And right really enjoy learning some new skills, speaking a little bit of Hawaiian, right. learning some new things, and, and doing more than the usual, like I'll say. It's not just trivia and watching movies and right. you know running back and forth on uh, beanbag tosses or whatever. <laughs> they were all there, but there were so many unique things that were specific to the places we were visiting, right. the food we were eating, and you know how we were experiencing this part of the world across the South Pacific. Right. Wow. Yeah, it was just great. Just wow. Yeah. And it's gonna be hard to get off. Partly because we have to pack everything back in our suitcase. Oh, we got to do that right after this. We're going to go back up to the room and put everything in the suitcase somehow. Somehow. Uh, <laughs> well, we have our work cut out for us yeah. tonight. But I definitely would recommend this as an opportunity. And if somebody is thinking about putting <clears throat> this together, a cruise is the way to do it because mm -hmm. it gets you from one continent to the next to yes. the next. Yep. And all these wonderful countries, Next Wave Cruising is here and can help you to do that. And we're really happy to. Our contact information is below this video in the description. So reach out to us today. We would be happy to share more about our adventures and give you kind of an input and advice that you might be looking for if you're thinking about planning this kind of amazing, amazing cruise itinerary. And I can't say enough about Celebrity. They did a great job for they us. They really did. <laughs> And before you go, check out the video in the upper right. There's a lot of good cruising information there for you, and I'll see you over there.